today i'm uh, going to talk about brahma vihara have you heard of brahma vihara the four abiding states of mind no. you haven't heard that the no. four abiding states of mind brahma vihara i'll explain you what brahma means um now um these four good friends mm-hmm. and now we call them the four good friends in our heart right they are just waiting for to abide and also we have five bad enemies five bad friends not friends you can't call them friends five bad people that are uh, they are just sitting and waiting to jump out any time mm. right so there are four good friends that are beneficial for us for our uh healthy living at any we can call loving kindness compassion mm. altruistic joy or you can call it um, joy fathers and equanimity so i will explain to you those four um mental states because um uh, these four mental states are we can call them virtues you know what virtues are the good morals mm-hmm. virtues the good morals and when you practice these four um they are good for yourself for your good health your happiness and also they are beneficial for the people who associate you they influence others right mm-hmm. so qualities uh, five bad qualities are the ones that are sensual pleasures you don't know what they are um you know the pleasures that we indulge in through our senses mm-hmm. they are called the sensual pleasures and then um anger then the third one is sloth and torpor sloth and torpor that's laziness t o r um then kama chanda vyapada tena medu dachiko that is restlessness fourth one and the fifth one is skeptical doubts skeptical skeptical now when when we have those five when we get these five qualities everybody gets these qualities here and there so when we get these qualities sensual sensual pleasures first one right so when you have these qualities they interfere our life even when we are studying interfere with our meditation mm-hmm. and uh, whatever the important things that we need uh, to do with our probably our brain our knowledge they interfere and they are not helping us to get our achievements right so this uh, loving kindness uh, i will exp- i think i explain the f- Uh, five hindrances and in those five hindrances the first one we said the sensual pleasures because the reason why uh, the buddha uh, spoke about the sensual pleasures is because we over indulge in them because once we want to have more pleasures we go over and over and over indulge in them and then because of that it's not going to uh, they are going to affect us right they are not going to help us um and we get we fall into unwholesome situations you know what unwholesome means wholesome and unwholesome wholesome means all uh, good deeds mm. that are good for you and good for the others and that can benefit all unwholesome is the things that are not good for you and not good for the others mm. right so they are the roots are the roots are, are unwholesome actions greed hatred and delusion and uh, the roots of wholesome actions are non greed non hatred and non delusion mm-hmm. right so roots of wholesome actions are non greed non hatred and non delusion and also if we uh, trans um, if we uh, uh, go to the opposites of the the uh, the unwholesome actions they are to do with um generosity loving kindness and wisdom so they are wholesome in other words right mm-hmm. so that's 
the difference between wholesome and non-wholesome. Now Buddha also stated that for you to distinguish which is wholesome and unwholesome, um, he said this is how he advised his son, Venerable Rahula. You know he had a son. He advised his son, he said, if any action that you want to perform is good for you and good for the others, he said, then go ahead. It's a good action. Mm -hmm. so if any action that is not good for you and not good for the others, he said, don't do that. Right? So this is how you can just distinguish anything that you want, any action that you want to do, because karma is... So what about an action that is good for others, mm -hmm. but not good for yourself? Yes, I said, don't do it. Don't do it. Even if it's good for other people. Good for other people, no good for you. Um, no, he, he, he hasn't said that. He has said, if it's not good for others, that means it is not good for you as well. But if it's good for other people, yeah. but not, not for yeah, you, not, not then for not, you. don't. Don't do it don't still. Do it. Okay. It can be good for others, but it may not be good for you, like, mm. you know, it may bring you some problem, mm. right? Mm. So that is how it's in the Sutra. Um, if it's good for others and if it's good for you, go ahead. But if it's not good for you and not good for the others in the Sutra, it's only for good for you and good for the others, go ahead. If it's not good for you and not good for the others, then do not do it, right? Mm -hmm. So there are times that you may have to understand that something, if something is good for others, and if it is not good for you, what do you think? Maybe. It can be, isn't it? Yeah. It can be. But still don't do it because it's not good for you. Mm. It may bring you some bad uh, uh, shame. Probably it can give you some trouble and some guilt, you never know. No? Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so it has some truth. Alright? So that's how you distinguish between wholesome and unwholesome. And also, um, now we were talking about um, sensual pleasures, right? So, so sensual pleasures are okay for a certain level, but overindulging is not good, right? So Buddha doesn't deny happiness, but also Buddha says um, there is no ending to it because we have this craving and also we have this, um, um, we have this craving and also we are never satisfied. The unsatisfactoriness in life is always there in everybody, right? Mm -hmm. right. So, um, yeah, that's it. Then, anger. That's something we all have, right? Mm -hmm. So, because of anger, we attend to lots of unwholesome things. Because of anger, you know, you are we, anger comes... Um, to you because more, sometimes when you're deluded you know what delusion means you are ignorant and all of a sudden anger can pop up and harm someone hurt someone you see unknowingly can come up so now these are the five bad enemies we have five bad people five bad qualities we have right and also because of anger, you know, people commit to, committing to so many things, no? Killing can happen and carrying tales and all sorts of things, break families and all sorts of things can happen. And then the third one is um, sloth and torpor, laziness. Then you would keep delaying things, oh, maybe I'll do it tomorrow, <laughs> I can do it uh, maybe next week. And uh, that is not a good mental state. Now we are talking about mental states, okay? And the fourth one is um, restlessness. Now this restlessness also bothers people. Because we most of the time we human beings live in the past. 
we always live in the past we have more very um, few moments we live in the present because always our memory is with the past or in the future so because we are in the past and most of the memories that we have in the past are not wholesome they are unwholesome either with greed anger or delusion so those past memories we try to bring them back because they are sensual pleasures right mm -hmm. so which are unwholesome and the future ones also we are not sure whether they are going to happen and we still think about it mm -hmm. and they are not helping us anymore so this is why the buddha always said be in the present moment and that is why the meditation is for to be in the present moment so you bring wholesomeness into your mind right so every time we sit down and meditate that moment that present moment is wholesome and you also earn merits much much merits by being in the present moment being alive and being aware in the present moment right mm -hmm. So then the next one, the source, uh, the restlessness comes because of that, and also we regret things. Oh, I could have done this. I could. I forgot to do this, and this shouldn't be. You know, shouldn't be the way that I wanted it because you don't want to let go <laughs> certain things. You hold on to things. So now that is also it's not a good mental state. And if you want to sit down and meditate, and when you are at a retreat. you are going to find it very difficult if you have those five hindrances okay mm -hmm. and then the last one is skeptical doubt skeptical doubt is for a buddhist practitioner to meditate that person if that person has doubts about the buddha mm -hmm. his teachings about his buddhahood his teachings and about his disciples then that doubt will not allow you to go any further in your practice because you will think oh was there a buddha before is it really this his teachings and uh, you know so you have doubts about them so when you have doubts about your te the the teacher your the buddha the, you don't you don't i don't think anybody can pra go further in in that mm -hmm. process so first thing you have to have the faith the faith also we call it confidence in the buddha's teachings so one gains confidence after practicing and one when one can see the truth when one can understand that whatever the buddha's teachings are um, uh, real and this is going to help you then only that person gains confidence or faith mm -hmm. and that's what we call faith in buddhism actually we don't use that word faith in buddhism we all we uh, we call confidence that's the correct word in buddhism but most books are written as faith because they want to be common with the other things so now these five they we call them hindrances they're called hindrances they hinder our development mental development So when you are seated, uh, trying to practice meditation, these five can pop up any time. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's what I said. They pop up. They are seated somewhere and any time, and they are also restless. They are not at rest, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So these five. So you have to remember them that these are the hindrances. Now other four, they are lovely sitting with us. but we have to promote them develop them you know we must try and promote them develop them and uh, uh cultivate them so that needs a bit of effort and an understanding to cultivate the four brahma viharas now buddha call these brahma viharas because the brahma the word brahma you must have heard brahma brahma means abodes like the brahma is the god of the gods brahma is called the god of the gods so he is the highest celestial being 
and Brahma, he has become the Brahma because he has practiced these qualities. And these four qualities, the four abiding states, he has practiced, cultivated, and he already has these four qualities in him. So when a person practices these four abidings, the four Brahma Viharas, our mental states, our level of consciousness is above the normal beings. And that is why they are called higher abodes. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you know that? And the Vihara, Brahma, now you know who Brahma is. The Vihara means, you know, Vihara is another name in Pali for call for pagoda. Oh, okay. Pagoda, you have seen pagodas? So in a pagoda, uh, the, um, the, we shrine Buddha's relics, no? We shrine the best, isn't it? In a pagoda, very sacred. So the Buddha says, this Brahma Viharas, so this Vihara is a very special place where you enshrine the most um, precious things. Mm -hmm. And then um, it's, uh, it's something like you keep for a longer period of time, keep it forever. So this Brahma Vihara should be cultivated in your heart just like a pagoda that's very special. And it should be there always. That's why the, the, the meaning Brahma Vihara is four. So in English we call them the four abiding states mm. or we can call them the four immeasurables. Mm. Yeah, four immeasurables. Mm. Yeah, four immeasurables. So these four are very beautiful um, uh, emotions to practice, four mental qualities for people to practice. Right? So let me see if I have missed anything now. So you can remember. Huh? Can you repeat the four immeasurables? Immeasurables, loving kindness. Mm -hmm. Love. Loving kindness. Loving kindness. I will explain one by one. Mm -hmm. uh, compassion. Altruistic joy or you can say joy for others. Altruistic joy or joy for others. Uh, <laughs> come, come, come on in. Joy for this. Take one paper. I'm Varimbal Sudhamma. And you? Manori. Manori, yeah. <laughs> Manori must be. <laughs> <laughs> What's your other name? Vitarana. Ah, then she's Sri Lanka. <laughs> Sri Lanka. Yeah. Oh. Okay, nice to meet you, Anuri. <laughs> okay? In kindness, compassion, so, joy for others. Equanimity. 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 Equanimity, Equanimity means um, the balanced state of mind. Oh. So the end of.